Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I have been uh, <coughs> reporting to the president, been meeting with the secretary of state, the vice president, the secretary of defense, chairman of the joint chiefs, and other senior officials. And uh, I'm meeting with you today because we wanted to give you an account of the negotiations as they stand today. I'm sure you will appreciate that I cannot go into the details of particular issues, but I will give you as fair and honest a description of the general trend of the negotiations as I can. First, let me do this in three parts. What led us to believe at the end of October that peace was imminent? Second, what has happened since? Third, where do we go from here? At the end of October, we had just concluded three weeks of negotiations with the North Vietnamese. As you all know, on October 8th, the North Vietnamese presented to us a proposal, which, as it later became elaborated, appeared to us to reflect the main principles that the president has always enunciated as being part of the American position. These principles were that there had to be an unconditional release of American uh, prisoners throughout Indochina. Secondly, that there should be a ceasefire in Indochina brought into being by various means suitable to the conditions of the country's concern. Third, that we were prepared to withdraw our forces under these conditions in a time period to be mutually agreed upon. Fourth, that we would not prejudge the political outcome of the future of South Vietnam. We would not impose a particular solution. We would not insist on our particular solution. The agreement, as it was developed during October, seemed to us to reflect these principles precisely. Then towards the end of October, we encountered a number of difficulties. <coughs> now at the time, because we wanted to maintain the atmosphere leading to a rapid settlement, we mentioned them at our briefings, but we did not elaborate on them. But let me sum up what the uh, problems were at the end of October. It became apparent that there was, in preparation, a massive communist effort to launch an attack throughout South Vietnam to begin several days before the ceasefire would have been declared and to continue for some weeks after the ceasefire came into being. Second, there was an interview by the North Vietnamese Prime Minister, which <coughs> implied that the political solution that we had always insisted was part of our principles, namely that we would not impose a coalition government, was not as clear-cut as our record of the negotiations indicated. And thirdly, as no one could miss, we encountered some specific objections from uh, Saigon. In these conditions, we proposed to Hanoi that there should be one other round of negotiations to clear up these difficulties, we were convinced that with goodwill on both sides, these difficulties 
could be relatively easily surmounted. And that if we conducted ourselves on both sides in the spirit of the October negotiations, a settlement would 